One Piece's new chapter just dropped and it hit us with a lot of new surprises and brand new information for the whole of the series. But did you realize that most people have missed five things over the course of the latest chapter that are changing One Piece entirely? So let's go over them in order. The first of these big reveals was the fact that Joy Boy was the first pirate. While it's never been specifically theorized that Joy Boy was the first pirate, in this universe they seem to be running more with the idea of the historical analogy of a pirate, which was usually a criminal branded by an empire or king of some kind, specifically because of how dangerous they were considered. In this case, Joy Boy likely received this because of, you know, the monumental threat he represented to the 20 countries that would later become the world government. This very much seems to have placed him as always being a rebel, or at least very close to it from the start of his career. We'll probably find out more about this as the Poneglyphs are revealed, but it's still a very interesting allocation of information to the audience. On the back of this, we also got the finding out that the ancient civilization really was deeply connected to Joy Boy. Whether he was their king or just a very prominent figure, this civilization was very heavily tied in with him. Obviously, it was the one he came from, but it also had largely huge implications of being based around him in various ways, which was likely why it was a race to begin with. We'll cover on more why this is explicit later in the video, but let's just needless to say a lot of aspects of this are starting to line up of just how important Joy Boy was. Another civilization that has a deep connection to Joy Boy, as it turns out, was actually the Giants. Now, we've known for a while that the Giants have been saying that Joy Boy seems to have a special relevance to them because of, you know, the reveal of Luffy's form striking some interesting imagery for them. Uh, this has obviously been cycling around within the fan community for a while now, but now we have a full declaration that Joy Boy ties into that. Whether he knew the Giants personally and, you know, how that came about of them as him becoming their god, whether he helped them out or there was a pre-established reason for that religion to happen, and perhaps even tying into why certain Giants have the middle initial of D, will probably also be revealed later. But needless to say, this is going to have a large impact for the Elbaf arc, which, as we all have been theorizing for a while now, will more than likely be an arc about Usopp specifically, which could have very interesting overarching implications, as Usopp is really considered Luffy's shadow throughout the whole series, Nika being important to the Giants, and then Usopp being an important character for this upcoming arc could have deep meaning and symbolism and possibly deep character building for everybody involved. That leads us to the second big reveal, which to be fair, most people have been covering this way for about the better part of a week anyway since we found out about the world flood, but needless to say, now we have it confirmed that the flooding of the One Piece world is not a natural occurrence. It's a bit too early to say exactly how this ties into the original flood, but we clearly know that the rising sea level that currently has been experienced was due to the destruction of the Lulasia Kingdom during, you know, the recent chapters. This caused a fairly huge outbreak of water to surge up all over the world, causing some islands to be swallowed completely and others to lose their beaches and significant land mass. We even found out that this affected places like Impel Down, so it's kind of interesting that this will have a worldwide consequence and that since it's not a natural occurrence, it is controlled, at least by Emu, possibly, you know, other world government entities can control it. We don't entirely understand how this process happened originally and how it ties into the Mother Flame, which of course is going to be our number one spot. That being that the Mother Flame is very much a representation of the fact that Joy Boy's power is much stronger than we've been led to believe. Here's how this breaks down. Luffy's Gear 5 is extremely powerful. It was strong enough to beat Kaido. That having been said, I've seen some people saying that it's incomplete or he'll unlock Gear 6. I actually have a video on him unlocking Gear 6. Go ahead and check it out here. But one of the more important aspects of this is, is that he seems to be not that familiar with it, so there's a theorizing that he could go further with it. Honestly, that seems pretty likely because, in my opinion, when Dr. Vegapunk talks about the robot attacking the island, this seems to coincide with the first transformation of Luffy. And that probably also coincides with the fact that now that he's shifted, we've seen the robot get back up, or at least start to power back up. This suggests that Joy Boy's fruit might very well have been the power source for his civilization. And if that's true, the Mother Flame might very well be a weak version of his power. So it's entirely possible that he could be even stronger. And this does make some sense, as for what we've seen of Nika, and it is incredibly strong, it lacks any actual sun connection. And 
yes, I know there's like a whole thing about it being metaphorical, but still, there's no flame attack other than Luffy's self-perfected, you know, gum gum red hawk. So there's probably some extra power that's going to come out of this, and it'll be very interesting to see what it looks like. If you enjoyed these top five points, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video, and go ahead and check out some of my other videos here popping up somewhere.